All right, looks like we are live. Welcome, 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 everybody. Thank you for joining us today. All of my regular folks already know what to do. They are already getting the party started by putting their information in there, their company names and info in the chat. So thank you, Charles, for that. Thank you, Leland, for that. Thanks, Mark. I see you guys. Uh, listen, this is good stuff. I'm happy to be here today. Happy to talk with folks about bidding and no bidding. And really, um, I just want them to have more of a conversation than anything else. I know that oftentimes we don't get a chance to have conversations because uh, we're so busy in our everyday life. So thank you so much for spending time with us today. Thank you so much for joining us and being on our show. Uh, we appreciate you greatly. Make sure, though, to subscribe first and foremost. Also, hit the like button. That helps us out. And then if you feel so kindly, hey, we do have a membership program that's available uh, because we do take these live sessions down and we put them behind a members-only paywall. So if you're not already a member on our YouTube channel, make sure to do so today because that does help keep things going. We do have a, a whole marketing team that I've got to pay for. And so as you can imagine, that's not free. So now that we've got the public relations out the way, you know who I am, GovCon Eric. Thank you so much. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Uh, as you may see in the chat, there are members that are putting in their information. Uh, so if you are new and this is your first time joining us on a live session, feel free to put your information in that chat session as well. So what we're looking for is the name of your organization, the city where you're from, and also tell us what you do. Uh, we are starting to get back to having actual live events, but until that time frame, let's fellowship today. We're going to be here for about an hour chatting, talking about opportunities. We're going to pull down some things. I've already pulled some things down, but we're going to go into it in further detail as well. So if you are new, make sure to put your information in here. Let us know the city you're from. Tell us a little bit about yourself, the industry that you're in, and the name of your company. You'd be surprised how many relationships start this way. So this is a great place to meet people, to date people in government contracting, to form new relationships in government contracting. We are the all things federal government contracting channel. No funny videos, no cats, no dogs, no animals. I'm sorry. That's another site. So thanks so much, Stephanie. Uh, welcome, Chris Diggs. I see you. Andrew, I see you. I see. Let me see who's out here. Mark. That's great. Um, and so I love this communication back and forth uh, about, you know, looking at opportunities that we could go after together. Um, so listen, give me some likes. 20 people watching. Secure Operation Solutions, Alex is here. Make sure to watch the video that Alex uh, was on with Maria. If you haven't already seen that on Making a Giant, our episode. Also, do me a favor. If you're listening to our podcast anywhere, on, specifically on Apple, uh, give us some reviews on our podcast. If you've purchased one of the two of my books, give us reviews. That is always helpful as well. And you know what? Juliet, you're right. I don't have any of my books here to show. Shame on me for not having my books uh, in the backdrop. I've got to fix that. So, all right. Um, so let's jump right in and go through and see what's the latest and greatest that the government has to offer. By the way, let me, uh, on another programming note here, I'm actually, da, 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 da. the VIB network, if you're a veteran owned organization, veteran owned business, or if you're not, they're having their national conference in live, in person, November 8th through the 9th is that event. And I will be there. So actually I'm going to be there at the event. Uh, I will have a booth. Uh, I'm going to be doing a breakout podcast session. So I will be live recording from this event in California. I don't remember where in California it is. So you got to do your own due diligence, but Definitely. Uh, so if you get a chance and you're in the area, I will be in California that weekend at that particular event. So if you get a chance to join us, come on down and join us there. Now, our favorite, favorite, favorite website, or some of you guys and girls' favorite website, sam.gov. We're here on sam.gov. And by the way, if you have any questions for me, um, just drop them in the chat and I'll get to them. 
Don't worry. It, this is an interactive session. Um, so, you know, I'll get to your questions. And um, so what we're going to do, we're going to go through Sam.gov, and I'm going to just I'm going to start over because why? Uh, I want people to see the process that I go through. And let's look. All right. Let me see. It looks like they logged me out. Did they log me out? Yes, they did. So they logged me out. I got to sign in again. Sam, I'm probably going to have to enter my password. Bear with me. Give me a second. Okay. All right. So I was already signed in. So that's good. All right. Over here on Sam.gov, um, let's go in and search. And most of you, if you've seen my bid opportunity videos, you're probably familiar with this, but I've never done it live. I've always pre recorded the videos and then sent them to people afterwards. So this is the, my first shot at recording it live. And then that way we can talk about it together. Uh, similar to what Andrew is doing with Mark in the Facebook group and offline, uh, looking at opportunities that we can work on together. This, I felt like, is something that, as well, we can equally do together. So we're going to do that. Notice type. We're always looking at sources sought. Remember, that is one of the things that I do each and every week. Uh, I like to see what was posted. Okay, response, due dates. Updated past week. All right. So I like to see what was posted in the past week. Um, it gives me 583 results. What's cool now, Sam doesn't, you don't have to hit the reset button anymore. So as you change these fields, right, look, it does it automatically, which I think is pretty cool. So um, again, we're looking at RFIs. We're looking at sources sought. And we're going to go through our list. Now, for those people who are new, who've never seen this process before, uh, what we do here, and make sure the whole thing's on my screen, here on Actions, okay, when I click the Actions button, it gives me the option to download the results. I download it, I click CSV file, and let me switch screens. There you go, you can see my full screen now. Uh, I download it, click CSV file, and click Download, and then it downloads it to my computer. Uh, fortunately for you great folks out here, I've already done this. It's like a cooking channel where I've already done the hard work. So I've already pulled down these opportunities and I have them here in Excel. So if you haven't uh, watched some of my videos in the past and you've seen me do this exercise, it's a pretty neat trick that we do here. Um, let's go over and where is it at? Okay, looks like I switched screens on everybody, but uh, yep, so I pulled them down, and you'll see here, here's my list of opportunities, and I'm at 569. And what I want to do is we just want to talk through some of this stuff and see if there's anything out there that makes sense for folks, and then let's dive into one of them and talk about it. Now, uh, since I already kind of shared with people out there uh, this screen, I'll pull it back up. This is our bid, no bid decision framework. I did not create this. Uh, this was someone else that taught this session, uh, so I'm sharing their information. We'll make sure to put the person's credits in there as well. Uh, but this is what we use to go through and determine whether or not uh, we want to bid a particular project. Now, the reason why um, we're looking at source of sorts, that is actually, these are not contracts. Source of sorts are not contracts, right? Um, for all of my advanced students in the world, just can you write in there what a source of thoughts? Source of thoughts is where we start doing market research. Um, but even when you're doing market research, and what prompted me so to do this video was because I sat on a call with NASA. And uh, we sat on a webinar with NASA. Some of you might have seen that webinar. So we sat on a, a webinar with NASA, and this was an issue. NASA was saying that the majority of the responses that people were sending to the source of thought notices are just capabilities statements. Um, and so I'm like, oh my goodness, there's no way these people are following GovCon Eric and the channel because my people know better than to do that, right, people? Yes, right? All of you out here who are watching me, you know better than to send your capability statement to a source of thought response. Why? Because we teach you that. But like all things, sometimes we forget, sometimes we're lazy, sometimes uh, we didn't watch the whole video. And so that's why we're talking about today is like looking at whether or not you should respond um, is the first thing that we should do in the process. And then once you make the decision and commitment to respond, 
based on your ability to deliver and perform this service, then uh, we respond the proper way according to what the government is asking of us. So we're and we're going to talk about that and we're going to look into that today. So real quick, I'm going to put this back up on the screen. We've done that. I'm just going to kind of go right back over. I want to see if anybody has any questions, comments, concerns about anything that we're sharing today. Uh, also, we did have a live session earlier where we went through and uh, Critty, Nicole Anders, Nicole Bradshaw, sorry, uh, <laughs> we were making calls. So we did have a live session today where we did that. And, um, and so, so that's part of what we did today. Now, Good job, Andrew. That's correct. Sources sought market research and free opportunity to put your company name in front of a target agency. Uh, spend the time to do it right. Thank you. Appreciate that. Uh, so let's talk. Hey, Yolanda, welcome. Hey, Fiona, welcome. King Love, welcome. Rich, uh, PA, New Jersey, welcome. All right. So let's jump in and let's pull down some of this stuff and go over it together. See if there's anything out here exciting that maybe... One of you great folks can do, and then we can actually use you as a real life example. That would be the best, don't you think? All right, so we've got that notice ID. We have titles. We have our descriptions here. Let's see if there's anything on here that makes sense for us to take a look at. Commercial driver's license certification program. And by the way, if you see anything on here that you like, stop me, okay? I would love for you out here, if you see anything on this list, that you like, just stop me, or not stop me, but write in the chat that you like that particular notice, and then what I'll do is uh, we'll take and review it for you. So again, I'm going to go through this, and hopefully someone will see something that makes sense to them, and then we can go through it and talk about the requirements. All right, let's look at this. Theater medical program, junk statement, uh, retail food store locations, data analytics, support services, uh, DCMA IT support services. I've got. I know there's about three of you in here in IT world. AccuStaff software, window assemblies. Scroll up. GPS transmitters, RFI fabrication and testing of textile-based specimens. That's interesting. Uh, plasmid vector construction. That's interesting. Uh, emergency generators. Leadership Research Assistant Support Services. Hmm. Plant Growth Chamber. That's interesting. Let's. I want to pull that one up. Only because I'm. Um, I'm fascinated with that one. Let me pull it up. Pop it in here. Okay. Let's take a look at this together. All right, USDA plant growth chamber. Small business set aside. All right, description and market surveys being conducted to determine if there are adequate small businesses. Hubs on 8A women on service table for a proposed Project could meet the specific criteria outlined below. It's not solicit this is not a solicitation announcement or request for proposal. Doesn't constitute a commitment by the government. Blah 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 blah. We know all that. All right. After completing analysis of responses, they would determine whether or not to limit the competition to one of these categories or not. So again, we you know one of the things that NASA said to me, well not to me, but one of the things that NASA said on that call the other day was that how few people were responding. And so it's really our fault if the government puts this out full and open competition and doesn't set aside for small businesses. So we can really all do ourselves a big favor and try and share this information with everyone because this is really how we're going to help ourselves and help other small businesses. Uh, think of it as a collective effort of pulling down all of these projects, right? Pulling down out the sky and putting them at a level that we can reach them and be able to achieve and attain opportunities for ourselves. Uh, let's take a look at this. I, I bet you we all have some friends that probably know how to do this plant growth chamber thing. They probably did it before USDA was doing it, and they probably did it around middle school age, right? 
And so um, they're those same people probably not looking at this kind of stuff, but they might be the best guy or girl to figure out how to put together a plant growth chamber. Uh, let's see. So we're going to conduct a, a BSL2 plant growth chamber with HEPA filter and negative pressure to conduct plant inoculation experiments. With BSL-2 pathogens, the growth chamber must include the following. All right, HEPA filter on chamber exhaust, negative pressure to force airflow chamber, fan speed control, humidity control, uh, misting system, external condenser, external waste pump. Um, that seems pretty easy. I don't, I don't see anything uh, extraordinarily difficult with this one. It seems pretty easy to do. So this is great. This is good. I, I love it. I think that... Um, Right now, for most of us out here, this is something that uh, is not too far from the realistic. So let me jump on and just review people's comments and see uh, if there's anyone out here that could do it. Rich here, representing 1819 Digital Website. Good stuff. All right. Anyone out here? That's something anyone out here, anyone out here knows anyone that could do that? Also watching with friend watching, and he has a general freight trucking company. Good stuff. Uh, Rich. Yep. We're not talking about trucking opportunities in particular, Rich. We are just looking at them all together. So, but yeah, if you have any questions, drop it in the chat. I'll be happy to answer anything that you have. All right. So we have a responsive submitted, need to be submitted by June 18th. Uh, today is the 21st. So that already passed. Um, but it's okay because, again, we're just for purposes of conversation and talking. Uh, there are no attachments, so there's nothing else to submit. Um, I would simply answer the response with my contact information, um, answering these one through seven items just the way they are, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And it says if you have capabilities uh, of doing this, if you have the experience, as well as an interest in doing business with ARS, you should con submit a capability statement Quotes or proposals will not be accepted. So for all of my so smart people that want to submit a quote on putting this together, that's not what they're looking for. So you're probably going to end up in a waste basket where you belong for not following instructions. All right. Very, very, very important thing. All right. Let's go back to our list and see what else do we have. By the way, if I see something for trucking, I'm definitely going to shout it out. So uh, if I see anything that says trucking on it, I'm going to pull that down because of all my wonderful trucking people out there that are following us on this particular channel. Um, another thing, which just talking to the trucking folks, a lot of times, you know, we're looking on Sam and you're looking at items to bid. And so you don't see it. And what happens is the the way that the government's purchasing uh, the trucking services are not necessarily coming from SAM. So it would behoove you to go back and research how the government is buying the trucking services. Uh, we do have a video on it, and I did pull down an example list, which people, a lot of people just want the list. But the list is actually the least important part because the list itself is just a list that I pulled off of a public government website. So if you know how to do your research, which... We've got some students in here that are really good at doing their research. If you know how to do the research, you can pull out the past dollars that the government spent in the trucking space and then create your own list based on your specific types of trucks that you have and the specific types of products that you carry, whether it's a short run, whether it's a long run, whether it's a covered truck, whether it's a refrigerated truck. So those are the things that you would do because it's because really uh, it's specific to you only and um, any list that anyone gives is going to be a very generic list that may not cover the types of trucks that you have so i just wanted to say that to you out there all right back over here on our page uh, we're looking through opportunities and again feel free folks listen this is your time with me so feel free to ask questions all right auto term real real alarm points additive machining dynamic analyzer suite Snow removal service base plus four. United States agriculture seeks lease, lease space. Uh, decennial census unemployment compensation services. That's interesting. Uh, controlled substance destruction services. All right. That looks pretty cool. Let's check that out and see what that's about. 
go back over here to Sam. Plug it in. Hit enter. Okay. Let's open this bad boy up over here. See what the government's talking about. Control of Substance Destruction Services. Veterans Affair. Hazardous Waste Collection. All right, source of sought announcement. No solicitations available. Government will not pay for any information in response. You know what's interesting? The government has to write that because some of you people want to get paid for this stuff. Believe it or not, I've had people ask me that question, Eric. Uh, is, I'm taking time and money. Does the government going to re reimburse me? The government is not reimbursing you um, to help them, to help you, so you can have contract opportunities. Uh, the information requested, like Andrew said earlier, use this as a way to market yourself to a specific organization, specific agency, office that you want to do business with. So why should they pay you to market yourself to them? It doesn't make a lot of sense. The information request will be used solely in determining the Department of Federal Affairs facilitate decision making it will not be disclosed outside of government. So don't worry. They're not sending your stuff out to your competitors. They're keeping it for themselves. Uh, determination of procurement strategy based on the comments. Submit in response or so it's so within discretion of the government. Um, potential offers must be registered in SAM to be eligible. So one of the things that we've discussed in the past is that you you really do have the right, um, and I in one of our videos with Ryan and CO, you have the right to not right, you have the if you would like to, and you believe that the way that they're trying to purchase this uh, is not the correct way you within your response can tell the government, hey, I think that you should buy this good or service this way. So you have that right and ability to do that within your written response. Uh, I've done that before. Sometimes the government's asked for it. Sometimes they haven't asked for it. And so I've done it because um, for me, uh, I wanted to, for example, uh, some of, one of the opportunities that I was looking at was a really big project. Um, and the government wanted to determine uh, what was the, the area of responsibility? So meaning like, uh, d you know, was the whole, say, Florida, Georgia, North Carolina, should that be considered the South region? Or should the South region just be considered the state of Florida or Florida and Georgia, right? And so they were trying to determine what was an uh, acceptable region or boundary for these this particular projects that they were putting out. And so they asked us to determine that. And, and so we were able to say, hey, we think that uh, companies like, say, small business per se, uh, for us, uh, Florida, Georgia, South Carolina, North Carolina is too big to be the South region because most small businesses can't service four states. So if you keep it just to Florida or you keep it to Florida, Georgia, then that's more feasible to be considered like the Southern region. And then you can put, so you can put this, you know, the South, South within the South region, and then you can put the North within the South region, if that makes sense. Maybe it's a bad example. I'll draw it on paper. Let me draw it on paper. Um, So let's say Florida, and then for the all intents and purposes, all right, so say these are the four states, and uh, they were trying to determine let's say what's considered the South region. And so, again, as a small business, most of us can't service all four states. So, I, you know, we said that um, that, hey, if you could take and go from uh, Georgia and Florida and consider that the south up within the south region, and then these two would be the northern part of the south region. And then that way you break it up into two components, and then companies can respond in this category and this category separately. And it, we just thought that made sense. So those are the kind of things that, um, you know, that you could, you could suggest in these res written responses. By the way, there's 34 people watching. Give us a like, please, please, please. It helps us um, continue to be boosted and promoted throughout all the social media 
situations. So let's keep going on this requirement. And again, if you see anything that you like or anything you want to talk about, uh, I'm definitely open to that. I'm checking periodically the chat. So feel free to drop something in the chat that you would like to share, comment, question, or concern. Um, but if you decide that you don't like the content, you don't like the video, rather than give me a thumbs down, just leave. I think that's probably better to suit it because, again, um, I'm not here to fit anyone. I'm not here to make anyone mad. I'm just really, freely giving my time and service. And so we want to make this the best situation possible. And I'd like to serve as many of you as possible. So definitely, if you don't interact and you don't ask questions and you leave here without your questions being answered, it's kind of your fault. All right, let's keep talking about this particular opportunity and what it says. Um, we know we need to be registering SAM. We know we need to have this code on our list. Um, let's see. This is due on the 24th. It says here, this is very interesting. Only firms seriously interested and truly capable should send their information and our capability statement and any questions to Olivia. All right. Please, please. Um, I know I'm beating a dead horse because it's not you because you are the smart ones here. Um, if you, it says, I really mean this. If you're serious and you are capable, if you're not capable, please don't waste these people's time. Don't say, well, Eric says it's for marketing. I, yes, it's for marketing, but only if you're capable, right? And that's the important part. Let's go back to our sheet here. Um, even though this is for bidding or no bidding decisions, the same thing. Do you have the ability to respond? Do you have a background experience and technical capability? Do you have a proposed team? Um, do you have knowledge of the customer? <laughs> any market intelligence, but just look at the first three, ability to respond, background experience, and technical capability, and proposed team and personnel. If you don't have those things, don't waste Miss Olivia's time because she's probably a sweet person. And a hundred of you bombarding her with a bunch of capability statements and not having the ability, she's got to sit through that. It really just does all of us a disservice. So I want at least the people that are watching this channel, the people that are watching this, to really be mindful and respectful of the government's time because at some point, right, you're going to be the guy or girl on the other side and you are going to be really, truly capable of doing this opportunity and someone's going to take away from you. And so people ask me, all right, how often does it, does it take before I went a bit? How often times before they're going to make a decision? They can't make a decision because they're dealing with all these silly people uh, responding here that don't have the ability to be able to do this stuff. So they can't make decisions on um, important things because they're dealing with silly things because folks out there who failed to learn, who failed to educate themselves, who failed to invest a little bit of time, because this doesn't cost you money, a little bit of time with me. Um, they did not follow the instructions. But I know that's none of you out here talking, so it's just for the people that are watching later. And if you've made it this far in my video, it's probably not you either. So thank you for that. Um, let's continue to go. Purpose of the service would be to maintain compliance with VH directive, federal regulation, and provide proper disposal of controlled substances that are deemed damaged, expired, returned, unusable, or otherwise unwanted that are lawfully possessed by the registrant. Disposal of controlled substance stock held for destruction required to be completed quarterly. DEA licensed destruction company should at least uh, quarterly to meet this requirement, but are not limited for quarterly scheduled appointments. Uh, for the purpose of this contract, the reverse distributor may be referred to as contract or vendor. Any kind of that re reverse distributes a controlled substance, shall be registered as a reverse distributor, it must be compliant with all federal, state, local laws. All right. Um, let's see. Okay. So uh, I don't know anyone I could do this. I just thought it was interesting. Uh, we're going to go back to our list because I don't even know what this thing is. So we're going to keep on with our list. And let me check the channel and see who's out here. Uh, hey, Sharon, welcome. Hey, Mr. Princess, welcome. Uh, memory, welcome. Um, yes, I'm on it. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Who else? What else? By the way, if you're just joining us, make sure to let people know what it is that you do. Tell us uh, about your company. Tell us what you do. Tell us the city you're from and tell us the name of your organization. So if you're just joining us, make sure to cover those three things. Um, Cybersecurity solutions, make sure, again, we don't know where you're from. Um, help us out. Help us help you. George, welcome, buddy. Um, George is over from Canada. I got your message. When you search on Sam and it says active, but the deadline says two years ago, should we follow up with them anyways? 
Uh, Rich, so again, um, which you know what we want to look at in terms of if something says act, if it says active, uh, but the deadline was two years ago, that means that someone in the office forgot to probably take that out the system, or uh, it could have been imported from the old FedBiz op site, and so now it's just sitting in the system and like the kind of like the dead zone. So yes, if it if it expired two years ago, no point in reaching out to them. And by the way, I don't encourage you to reach out to them anyways. I encourage you to respond, um, but not harass. So if Olivia, that opportunity was from two years ago, I would please don't bother Miss Olivia because maybe she's gone on to better career path than working here at that organization. So if it's active, but expired, please ignore uh, I would not do anything with it. I would. What I would do, though, is I would try to see if it was ever turned into a contract, if it ever happened. Oftentimes, uh, the government is, again, they're doing research. So maybe the, it never materialized into a contract. Maybe it materialized to an RP or anything like that. Uh, maybe they stopped the program or maybe just discontinued it. It's very similar to the wall, as the best example I can give, right? Would you be trying to respond to uh, active uh source of thoughts that discuss building a wall. Well, that was a few years ago, and now the wall thing has stopped. And so it really just, you know, it just doesn't make a lot of sense. So uh, definitely, hey, put in there, Tammy Miller, welcome. Gilbert Thomas, welcome. Uh, put in there what it is that you think. So let's go back, and let's keep jumping over here on our list and see what we have. Antennas. Giant voice system upgrade. And uh, if you're just joining us, you see anything on here that makes sense that you like, let's pull it down. Let's discuss it. Peterson Air Force Base Cat 6 premise wiring inside plant cabling. I just talked to someone recently who does that. Um, I have a guy in my group that does this. So I'm going to, I like this. I'm going to highlight it because. I know someone in our 2.0 course that does cabling. Yeah, by the way, let me know who you are because, at, you know, believe it or not, I do read my emails. I do read our text that we put up here. Uh, so I do read all that stuff. And a lot of times you hear me calling people out. That's because I hear from them all the time. So, again, let us know who you are and what you do. So that way I can keep this on top of the mind. Similarly to what I just saw here. IDIQ may talk for healthcare and medical research laboratory facility. Uh, portable ultrasound machine, marine travel, transmitters, helicopter drive systems. Let's see. More office space. 2021 Maytock, Ohio National Guard. Oh, that's interesting. I love Maytocks. I'm going to go a little bit more, and we're going to go through that Maytock. I love these Maytocks. I love Maytocks. In fact, you know what? Bump it. We're going to the Maytock right now. Let's jump over here. Let's look at the main talk. Uh, if you're just joining us, before we jump into that, I will be at the VIB conference, national conference, November 8th through 9th. I'm going to be there. I'm actually going to have uh, my own session at the conference. So if you're in California around this time frame, uh, we'll post it as we get closer. Um, but yes, I'm going to be there. I'm going to have my own, like I'm doing a live podcast show where I'm interviewing folks from the conference. So we will be doing that and I'll be there so you get a chance to meet and talk with me in California while, while I'm, when I'm off from working. Uh, we may come in a few days early because Erica's out there. So Erica's our new resource specialist. Um, if you have any questions for us or anything, any of the programs or anything that we do, you can always reach us, uh, 786-477-0477. That's 786-477-0477. You can reach Erica. Now back to this Ohio National Guard opportunity. And let me go back. Actually, hold on. I want to open up in a new tab. I like to do that so that way I don't lose my place. Questions, comments, don't be afraid. May talk. I love May talks. Remember, faster and further. Maytop, IDIQ. By the way, for all those in 2.0, tomorrow we're talking about IDIQs. So for the advanced session tomorrow, Tuesday's call, we're discussing IDIQs. 
All right, Andrew, Charles, Stephanie, all my GovCon folks on the call. Tomorrow we'll discuss some idea keys. All right, um, interested parties. July twenty first. So don't exceed ten written pages. One positive statement in ten to bid as a contractor. Complete and sign source out information request form. Listing of products completed during the past three years. Including a type of project, dollar value, contract number, location, brief outline of resources, subcontractor, and key personnel used to accomplish the effort. You might want to respond to this. All right. This makes a lot of sense. So again, I know my 2.0 people, I've got some folks that I'm going to, we're going to be responding to it. Um, Five-year program, task orders may talk to not exceed 10 million. Individual task orders are not expected to see three mil. Not bad. I'm probably going to go ahead and respond to that one. Uh, Nikki, if you're on the call, let's do this. What a good one for us to put in it for m and &E. So, all right. Thank you, Gilbert, my man. Gilbert, thanks for the 20 bucks. I appreciate you. All right. Uh, let's see. Questions. What do we have here? Okay. DJ Crime says, 44 people watching, 29 likes. I know it's hard to hit the like button because you got to move your mouse. But if you could hit that like button, please, for me. That would be great. Charles said they're hungry to work and eat. We'll be needing cyber employees. Teddy, welcome from Chicago. Uh, Yolanda, do today. I don't know what Yolanda wrote. Um, M Mr. MJ, I'm looking a bit at my first contract within the next four weeks or so. Do you think? I don't know what you're saying. All right. I joined a little late in the spreadsheet. Were there any... Um, Photography opportunities. Let's see. We'll take a look and see if there's any photography opportunities. I'm going to go back to the spreadsheet. Um, I don't know what MJ is, is doing. Um, and um, I'll come back to the question after we go through the spreadsheet some more. All right. So let's go through bearing assemblies. NAFAC, Atlantic Oconus Aircraft Parking Apron Replacement. I don't know what that is. Um, Cat TV, R5, Portal Repair and Support. Okay, I got some light. I could do that. Let's see, what else do we have out here? Purchase of quantity 216S RRNA, micro, microbial and quantity of 60 cytochrome oxidase. I can't even say that, so you know I can't do it. Instructors for Machinery and Machine Guarding Safety Course. Where's my safety people out here? I lost all my safety folks. I know Marla in the group was in is in that space. She probably knows some people who can help with that. Uh, let's see. NAVSUC Digital Transformation Change Management Support Request for Information. That sounds like some people, Andrew. Sounds like you and Critty and you folks could put that together and Dr. Sonny. Uh, media monitoring services. Okay. Uh, I don't know what that is. Let me take a look at that because I don't even know what that is. So let's take a look. By the way, I haven't heard anybody complain about my sound. So that means my sound must be pretty good, huh? I figured it out. No one's complaining anymore about my sound. So I guess we figured out the microphone situation. All right, media monitoring services. Uh, actually, this is pretty cool that the new SAM allows me to keep uh, actually saving all of the keywords and it just adds them up. So I think that's pretty cool. All right, let's look at this media monitoring services and see what they're talking about within the Navy. What's the Navy looking for over here? All right, seeking source of information for media monitoring services. Here's a draft, PWS. 
Selena Hodge. All right. Um, they didn't put a whole lot of information. That's why it's changed screens. They didn't tell us how to respond. Let's look at the draft PWS and the working document and see if that maybe tells us something else. By the way, don't be shy if you just joined us. Don't be shy. Jump on. All right. I'm gonna actually gonna I'm gonna pull this up on the screen, and I'll tell you why. Let me switch modes. Let me pull this up. Some kind of way. Give me a second. I'm going to have to play with some things over here. And then I'm going to pull this up. Keep talking, keep talking, keep talking while I figure this thing out. Give me a second. I have to put this on my screen. Bingo. All right, got it. So here it is. This is what we're talking about. So I pulled this down. Um, and here's the information about it. Media monitoring support services to improve visibility of media related to NAFSA mission and execution. Aren't there media people out here? I think the guy who does the trucking, aren't you a media person? I, I know that we have media people in the group that are, all, I know Colin in our group's a media person. Um, starts with an S. Stephanie. No, not Stephanie. Uh, we've got some media people in the group. Uh, for all my 2.0 students, 1.0 students, if you could think of the media person in the group, uh, this is really, I think this is great. Uh, media monitoring. Available type of information for OC monitoring media on a daily basis. Communication professionals can shape and develop appropriate messaging to support NAFSA and the Navy's mission. Media monitoring will allow NAFSA leaders to see metrics, help understand how messages convey to stakeholders. All right. Let's see. Contractors should provide personal access to resources that allow those uh, contract system to monitor media from a variety of outlets, personnel, Access information to be able to generate unlimited charts. This is cool. Six concurrent logins, 24-7, six simultaneous personal users, uh, market research docs, 24-7, pre-recorded online instructional videos, online documentation, easy, 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 how to use the software, how to run reports, how to print reports. Um, Instructor-led online webinars and covering set topics, dates, times, Flexwick, daily, weekly. Some examples are logistics. 10 training sessions throughout the year. Monitoring mentions training topics as it relates to NAFSUC. Around the globe on social, digital, and traditional media channels. Uh, this is pretty good. This terms are R&I for social elements. Customized media monitoring. So look, it seems like the government's coming into this century. Finally, finally, finally. And they're looking for people out here like yourselves who has expertise to do it. Provide access to coverage of over 17,000 print services and LexisNexis Library and Beyond, as well as 450,000 plus news websites. Uh, conduct comprehensive search and clipping service with access to minimum 1 million global media sources daily. This is big. I like it. Uh, NAFSA will provide no equipment and materials. NAFSA personnel should be able to access contract system software to access information required to perform their duties. Um, this is intense. And here we go. This is how you respond. But I like it because this is big. This is big. All right. Submit it. R5 inquiries responses should be submitted here. An email to the government point of contact. Shalina Hodge, contract specialist. Via the request and subject line. All of this is a test. Everything is a test. It's a test. It's a test. If you don't do this, you will not pass the test. 
She tells you very specifically, subject line. All right, if you don't do that, don't blame me. Why, Eric, why didn't they call me back? Eric, why didn't I pick up my phone call? Eric, how come I haven't heard from uh, Miss Hodge? Eric, how come Mrs. Hodge hasn't said anything? And then we go back and dig and see, can, can you forward me the email that you sent over to her? Yeah, yeah, here it is right here. I said, what does your subject line read? It says, source of sought response. That's not what she wrote. She specifically said, put in the subject line, RFI questions, media dash monitoring. Hey, Eric, I'm calling Miss Hodge. She's not answering my phone calls. Uh, verbal questions will not be answered via telephone. Very, very, I mean, I love it when they're this clear and they're this specific because you can't really screw up. I hate it when people are very vague because it gives an opportunity to make mistakes. This tells you exactly what they want, exactly how to do it, and so you should not be making mistakes on this one. Uh-oh. I think I messed up. Okay. All right. So here, tells you what to do, tells you what to put in, and then at the very end, tell us about your, uh, says here, business type includes large business, small business, veteran business, et cetera. All right. Makes sense. Makes sense. Makes sense. I'm going to leave it up on the screen. I think this is really, really slick. Uh, 10 virtual training sessions, um, auto translation services, up to a thousand of articles every month. I mean, <laughs> This is like sick. Oh my gosh. I mean, this is this is sick. I, I, I wish I had the ability to do it myself personally. So, all right, um, we're gonna jump back over here on the big screen. I'm gonna take a look at the chat and see uh, what folks have going on out there in the world. So we'll keep talking, we'll keep rapping uh, as I do that. And then we're gonna jump back over and we're gonna look at some more opportunities out there. So let's see, did I not take this off the screen? Hold on one second. I st let me take this off. Looks like I got the wrong browser up. So let me fix that because it's back over here. Let me go back to Sam and let me fix my browsers while I'm at it because uh, I pulled that document up for you. So. And put back up my Excel spreadsheet. Give me a second. Just give me a hard time. Where are you at? By the way, questions, comments, concerns, let me know. And uh, as I'm trying to fix this now, there it is. Okay, it's fixed. All right, good. We got it back. All right, good stuff. Questions, comments, concerns. Let me see what all of my great people think out there. All right, um, let's see. Hey, Logistics, laugh a lot. They have viral and trending topics. Yes. Oh, there you go. Airweb Digital. There you go. That's perfect. Um, let's get out of this mode. Go back over here. Okay. Logistics, they do have viral trending topics. I think this RFI is written for a specific company of mine. Uh, Andrew, it, it could be. But again, you know, that doesn't mean that someone else can't respond to it. Uh, they're looking to buy... Babel Street Services or something similar. Andrew already knows. Uh, she's Global Insight Production from the group. Anything for project management. That's what your company's capable of doing. Here's a great opportunity to take advantage of big guys. That's correct, Andrew. Exactly. And, that, and that's the reason, right? Because even if they have, you know, let's think of it this way. And that's a good point that Andrew brings up. Let's say that this particular opportunity that we're talking about, um, let's say that Andrew's right, that they this was written uh, with someone in mind. Uh, what's likely the case, Andrew, is that, and this is what happens all the time, and Andrew made a good point, and, and actually this is great. To, that's why I like discussing this live. Let's let's say that the person who wrote this from the government, um, you were given the job to, let's say that, uh, yes, there's a company that's currently doing these services now, 
And your job in the government is to find if there are other vendors out there because maybe you don't like the current vendor. Or maybe not you because you're just the administrative person that's posting it. Um, or maybe you're just a contract specialist and you don't make the, any ultimate decisions. But you've heard rumors that they don't really like the guy or the girl um, f- who's actually in charge, the company that's in charge of doing this. So now what is it that you do? Well, um, the easiest way, if I'm the government person, to put together market research is to take right the scope of work that these people are already doing and then plug that in and say, hey, we're doing market research now on opportunities. Does that make sense? And so for me, um, what I'm saying is that, yes, this could have been written based on a specific uh, company in mind because that's all the things that this company did. And so now what the government is saying, we, that we're not happy with them. They can't put this on there, right? They can't tell you we're not happy with that vendor or the contractor. Um, but uh, what happens when you respond to this and you uh, can meet the requirements, uh, now they have options to decide whether or not they want to continue with this not so great contractor, or they want to move on to someone better. And I can tell you this uh, because uh, if you have not already seen the episode with Roberta uh, Moore on my podcast, Roberta Moore experienced that her very first government contract. She met a guy at an event, and at the event when she met the person, uh, he was the, sitting at the table. She explained what her company does, and he was a decision maker for a uh, an agency um, and a contract and office within the agency who he said that they had like 48 hours or so to um, make a decision about continuing the contract with the incumbent. And um, because they didn't, for whatever reason, I, I don't know if they didn't put out a bid in time or they didn't have a time enough to bid it. Uh, they didn't have enough time to actually put out for bid or they didn't fail to do their pre-planning stages. So the existing uh, incumbent contract that was there knew that the government didn't have time to rebid this or put it on the street. And so they jacked up all the prices. Well, the government was very, not very happy with that, obviously, like none of us would be. Uh, and so what happens was uh, she was able to come in um, presented her capabilities, and uh, she actually was able to do a contract with them. They sole sourced her the contract, and then um, it bumped the incumbent out, and so she won the contract. Uh, and so, again, the point I'm making about the whole story is we don't know how happy they are with that particular customer or vendor because we don't have any insight or, or information about it. And so that's where uh, when we talk about here on this framework, um, How much do you have in terms of market intelligence? If you look down, uh, it's the fourth from the bottom. Do you have any market intelligence? Uh, How do you know uh, about the, uh, what what do you know about the competition? All those things help you uh, in making a decision. So for me, uh, I think that the government, again, they're shopping vendors. They're always shopping vendors and they're always uh, looking for people because sometimes, even if they're happy with the person, if the person keeps raising their price up, uh, maybe that's a reason to look for someone, or maybe they have uh, uh, their quality has has calmed down because they feel like, look, no one else can do this, so maybe they're not as sharp and working with the the vendors and stuff. Um, another story, real quick, that I want to share: when I got my first IDIQ contract uh, in the submarine base, the contracting people told me the reason why they were meeting with me because they were kicking off a contractor and. The reason why was because this person had been there or the company had been there for years and they kept writing them up and telling them to do little things to improve and they elected not to do them. And so they just got really frustrated with keep reminding them and telling them to do the same stuff. And again, people become complacent. Uh, And so that particular vendor was failing to do the things that the government was asking, which were really simple things. And so that gave me a crack. Just a little crack. All you need is a little crack. So that gave a little sliver of a crack, right, for me to come in and take their opportunities. And so that's kind of what we're all out here looking for, right, is we are all out here looking for our little crack just to break through. And then that way we can be the ones to take over and become the incumbent. So uh, great analysis, Andrew. Thank you for that. Uh, I agree with your assessment. Let's go over to the screen and see what all my wonderful people are up to. Um, RF5 versus RFQ, correct, MJ, big difference. Uh, 
how you become a subcontractor for an IT government contractor. What's the ID number on this media contract? Uh, the ID number is right there on the screen. That's the notice ID. Do a screen capture and grab it. Yolanda, the bid, no bid framework is inside the files. Yes, you can find it. It's in the files. Wow, an hour has gone through that quickly? Man, oh man. Let me get back to going on my list because time is a moving and grooving. What else? All my smart people out here. Tug services. Man, I got a guy that does tug services. I can never get him to, to do any of this stuff, man. I know a guy that does that. I wish I had a tugboat. I haven't even made it past number 90. But it's okay, because again, we're just, we're interacting with each other, talking, driving. Manufacturing, non-clinical study support. HVAC cooling towers. Predator exclusion and feral cat eradication. Oof. There's a cat eradication at Kilawi Point National Wildlife Refugee. Ooh. Now, this is interesting. I, I, let's talk about this, right? So let's talk about this cat eradication thing. So now, <laughs> the thing is, how many people who provide this kind of service uh, is going to be on here looking on the government's website uh, for opportunities. <laughs> so again, I'm just saying, if I were in this area and uh, people say, you know, and if you're a consultant or you're trying to like, Eric, look, I'll do anything. If you're in this area, go find a company that does this stuff and submit on their behalf. Just, I mean, you know, it, that's what I would do. Right? Bunker retrofit for Iraq, Kuwait, and Jordan. I, as how many people are watching always ask me, Eric, I live in another country. Can I do this? This stuff is in other countries. I don't know why people uh, pretend like the government doesn't do business everywhere. It, the questions doesn't make sense because our government does business all over the world. So, yes, of course, you could be in any country you want and still do government contracts because half the stuff we're buying are in other countries. And a lot of times they're wanting to work with local workforce because it makes sense. They know the lay of the land. So absolutely, absolutely, you could do stuff in other countries. Um, Harmony's Hospital Emergency Notification System, X-ray Apparatus Weight Bearing Imaging System, Acoustic Treatment, Hardware Software Updates to Existing Simulations, uh, Combat Net Radios, Carpet Replacement, Asbestos Carpet Replacement, Easy, 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 Easy Peasy, uh, some tow services, Day and Overnight Retreats. Ooh, da la la la. Let's take a look at that. That sounds like fun. Let's pull that up. Let's see what they're looking for. See, <laughs> this is where I tell people like, you know, Eric, can I do government contracting? Look, you remember those people that used to sell uh, vacation services? Uh, I forgot what it was, but they had like a word on their shirt. I don't remember what it was, but they would like sell you like travel. They were like that, um, like the network marketing for travel. Uh, look, the government tractor shall provide an, an inclusive retreat facility within 100 miles of Holland's Air Force Base, classroom facilities, meals, recreational activities, and lodging for day and overnight retreats for airmen and families. Contract shall provide facilities, meals, lodging, and activities for the company up to 40 participants. I think that's awesome. I mean, I, like, I think that is super, super, super awesome. Um, you know, I don't know where that base is. What is it called? Uh, Holloman Air Force Base. Where's Holloman Air Force Base? Holloman. Oh, New Mexico. Okay. All right. I think that is the coolest thing. Um, I'm not going to pull this up because it's going to mess up my document, but I think that is super cool and uh, super, super awesome. And again, the guy or the girl who's only looking at bids, items to bid, and who's skipping this stuff would never see this opportunity. And I, because I believe they have the 
right person, they're going to soul source this one out. I don't think they're going to put this out for bid. I could be wrong, but that doesn't seem like something they'll put out for bid. Uh, they're probably going to soul source it to the the person who responds or the people to say two or three people respond, they'll probably send the RFPs directly to those two or three people. And this will never go public. I would not be surprised. Appraisal support and consulting services. So again, I know I have friends I heard that are realtors and stuff. These are the kind of things that a realtor can do, right? Appraisal support and consulting services. Um, when people are looking at real estate, they're thinking about leasing space, but Think about appraisals, right? And then sometimes the grandma is appraising, like, uh, let's just look at it. Let's pull it up. Let's look at it. So I can show people who are realtors what we're talking about. This is for HUD, right? Which makes sense. Appraisal support. So the market research will determine the procurement method. No solicitation. Capabilities. So, okay, if your organization has potential capacity to do it, give us this. Okay, here it is. Look, here's a description of services. The review appraisal data and support documentation assess and determine whether automated valuation models utilized by mortgage lenders in the finance and refinancing process pose any discriminatory effects. Review, assess, and maintain quality control of individual appraisals for conformity with standard business practices. Provide expert witness reports, depositions, and trial testimonies needed for investigations and enforcement of the Fair Housing Act. Assist in developing assisted, uh, suggested industry-wide protocols for conducting appraisals to minimize the potential for discriminatory or human bias. Assist it. I mean, again, if you are in this business of doing appraisals, uh, and I know so many people because I'm a bunch of real estate. If you know, so I've met with a lot of realtors and appraisers and things like that. But guess what? They're not here looking for this kind of stuff. Um, look, look, look what they're asking for. You've got to have 10 years of experience in the housing appraisal market. Um, got to understand federal fair, uh, fair housing laws, uh, requirements of these regulations, four years bachelor's degree, demonstrate IT knowledge from our document management systems, um, demonstrate knowledge to assist attorneys with complex lawsuits, demonstrate knowledge, maintain databases, managing sort of indexing, abstracting, coordinating large forms of data, demonstrate skill to review documents, retrieve records, and develop trial presentation materials. Um, I think this is super, super, super cool. And um, so I think that you're not going to find maybe an appraiser to do it alone, but I think a good team between an appraiser and like, so for example, I have a friend that does, you know, he handles complex lawsuits and he prepares documentation to support lawsuits. And I myself have prepared documentation to support lawsuits, uh, it, to support my own lawsuits that I was being sued again, not ones that I was fighting. So it's a little bit different. But uh, I think that an appraiser combined with someone who has some experience um, in the legal field, which most of us who come from the real estate have dealt with appraisers and mortgage brokers and closing attorneys. So the closing attorney that you're dealing with on these real estate deals is familiar with a lot of this stuff. The appraiser is familiar with the appraisal system. And I think a good team like that would be excellent to put together and go after this opportunity. So um, that's kind of my thoughts on that. What else? What else, folks? I'm going to be jumping off soon um, in a little bit. Let's see what else we have uh, for folks joining overseas. Truck and logistics always constant need. Just to forget the offices to talk to. Andrew, good stuff. I love it. My man, Brian. What's going on, Brian? Gilbert, you're welcome, brother. Thank you. Um, Andrew's right. And by the way, listen, if I myself, I'm going to come on to the big screen. Uh, if I was on this call right now, right, and I'm listening, there's 47 people watching currently. If I'm on this particular call and I'm seeing Andrew is talking about this stuff, I would be reaching out to Andrew. That's just me. If I'm a trucker and I know some people reach me out, they got, I've got 25 trucks and Andrew's saying all this great stuff, I personally will be reaching out to Andrew. That's just me. That's the way I think and that's the way I do things. So again, you know, 
if you're on the call and you see people that are sound intelligent, um, that have shown what they're doing, and I would be trying to talk to those people. So uh, I just want to encourage the folks out there, um, just reach out to people and see how you can help. And um, he's offering his advice. It doesn't hurt to say, hey, Andrew, what's your email? Can I email you later and ask you some questions? So we're going to keep plugging along here. Let's see. We're going to go about, probably about another 10 minutes. Um, no one likes, after Brian killed it with my three-hour videos, I don't make three-hour videos anymore. So thank you, Brian Amster, for that. He said, Eric, nobody wants to watch a three-hour video. So I don't do three hours anymore, even though I could talk for three hours easily. Uh, but I don't do it because out of respect for everyone out there. Ooh, speaking of Brian, look at this. Light fixtures convert halogen bulbs to LED bulbs. I'm pulling this up for my buddy Brian because he just showed up and he's in the building. And I'm going to pull this one down for my man Brian, who is here. And let's see. I know Brian already found this because Brian's a smart guy. Uh, let's see. Let's see what this is. That's why you have to tell us what you do because we see this stuff on here. Light fixtures convert halogen bulbs to LED bulbs. Indoor actual electrical fixtures. Okay, this is the U.S. Army West Point bubble light conversion to LED watts. All right. And needs anticipated for services for bubble light bulbs, conversion to LED lights. Put in the name of the firm, point of contact, Dunn's Cage. All that great stuff. Brian's 8A, I already know that. Um, identify your firm mission and competing for this requirement. Information and sufficient detail regarding previous experience. Whether you've done prime, contract work, similar requirements, scope, complexity. You're going to be removing the existing light fixtures, manpower, equipment required, move all light fixtures, protective coverings, salvage and bulbs, install new LED fixtures, and information to help determine whether or not the conversion is commercially available, including pricing, information basis for pricing, etc. Uh, identify how the Army can best structure these requirements to facilitate competition among small businesses. Identify any uh, da, 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 da. All right. Sending responses to Ignacio. Ignacio is your man. Ooh. Okay, so I just caught something here. Hold on. Let me go to the other screen. I want to show you guys this. Number eight. Ignacio says. He says. Look, 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 look. Can you see this? Can you see this? This is what I was talking about earlier. So for the folks who were on earlier, it says here, please send all responses to Ignacio. Be sure to include the sources sought notice in your email subject line to prevent your reply from being deleted as spam. So again, if you don't want your thing deleted as spam, make sure to write this in the subject line. Because otherwise, it's going to be deleted as spam. So we talk about this stuff all the time. Um, and so, again, just kind of, you know, telling you a little bit about what I know and some experience we have and go from there. All right. Um, Gilbert says, I watched the three-hour video. <laughs> That's cool. All right. Um, let's see. Hello, everyone. And Taylor Freeman, Veteran Procurement Operations. All right, good stuff. All right, listen, um, we're not going to go through this whole list today. I just want to go through some things, have a couple conversations. Uh, IDIQ, Facilities Planning, Real Estate Advisory Services. That's pretty cool. Um, I think that'd be great. In fact, my man out of New York that I have not seen on my Tuesday calls does real estate. This would be sweet. Real Estate Advisory Services. Um, I've got friends that are in real estate to ask me how they do government contracts. I tell them buy my course. They want me to teach them one-on-one. -on -one. I can't do that. I got, I don't have that kind of time. Uh, take a look at that contract. Um, what else? What else? We're going to sign off in five minutes.
Do 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 do. IDIQ for a &E services. I know I got people that are looking at that. Uh, Ramon, I know you see this. I know my man Ramon saw it already. Vertical Maytock for Polk. I like that. All right. Consulting services on the design and implementation of the Open Neuro PET project. I don't know what that is. Not for people like me. I'm not that smart. Aerosol 3D jet printer. Okay. Robotic platform for some kind of coding. Sarah code coding? All right, but looking at robotic platforms, that's cool. Three minutes, we're signing off. Five year fire protection testing and inspection. All right, I don't see anything else on here exciting. Um, so I'll just run my mouth for the last three minutes and talk to the people in the chat. Sometimes, this is interesting, source of software 8 companies. So let's see what this is. Uh, sometimes, um, we have to do this 30 times before we get someone to actually send back their information. I don't know what this is, so I'm just pulling it up. So, you know, it's interesting, right? If you look at the way the title for this, it says Source of Salt for 8A Companies. Um, this happens to be U.S. Army Corps of Engineers. Let's see what they're looking for. But you, you wouldn't even, even know what they're looking for based on the title. I still don't know what they're looking for. Um, yet yeah, I'm trying to review this and see. Okay, I'm gonna have to come in here and look at the performance work statement. I'm gonna pull up in the screen to see what they're talking about because nothing there has given away. This is super secretive. All right, joint test and evaluation program office support services. Now, Andrew, this is one of the ones that I would say it looks like it's written for someone because this thing, even though it's publicly posted, the title doesn't tell you anything about it. Um, in fact, the performance work statement says that it's a non-personal services contract to provide technical administrative management, financial analysis, information technology, and functional services to the Joint Test and Evaluation Program Office, which monitors, executes projects within the JT&E program, uh, consisting of locations in Alexandria, Virginia, Suffolk, Virginia, Vicksburg, Mississippi. So nothing about the title um, said any of this stuff. So I have no idea. Uh, Chris says the box one we may be able to do. Uh, my boy says... Um, <laughs> Got to go lunchtime. Yep. And I'm going to sign off as well. It's 720 on the dot. So I'm going to sign off. Thank you as always for watching. Uh, if you're not on our email list, join our email list. Uh, if you've not done our free course, do the free course. And then if you're ready to go to the next step, look into our paid 1.0 or 2.0. Uh, we are moving into the 3.0 course. In fact, I don't think I have it on the screen. Uh, but the next time we'll come on, I'll share it with everybody tomorrow in the group. So as always, thank you guys for watching. 
Um, the government is, does buy everything. Uh, they are the largest buyer of goods and services across the planet. And so I would just, it would behoove you to learn this, to understand it, and to really get a grasp on it because why? They're going to be spending like mad. And I hope that you, along with other people out there, get the opportunity, get the chance to participate and eat off the government. So thanks as always. It's been a pleasure to serve you today. Looking forward to seeing you guys all tomorrow. Who's going to be the Tuesday calls where we're talking about IDIQ. 